Hello, this is Phil with Applegate Bushcraft Survival and Prospecting. Today I'm heading up to the top of Table Rock. Just north of Medford, Oregon are the Table Rocks. Table Rocks are buttes made from volcanic material. There are two table rocks, upper table rock and lower table rock. In today's adventure we will be hiking to the top of lower table rock starting at the parking area at the north side of Table Rock on Wheeler Road. We will then walk on the top of Lower Table Rock to the south edge where there is a spectacular view of Medford, Oregon. Table Rock is a mesa formation just to the north of Medford, Oregon that was formed from a lava flow about seven million years ago. You are looking at lower table rock and there is upper table rock. And there is an airplane flying overhead. From this spot you can also see Mount McLaughlin. That is where I go to the Pickshan Trails in that area over by Mount McLaughlin. There are an abundant amount of wildflowers and plants that grow on table rocks. Some of these plants can be found only on table rocks. This is the only place in the world where they grow. When you're up there hiking around, please uh, be careful where you step because you may be stepping on a very rare plant. Upper and lower table rocks are the only flat mountains around here. The table light -like caps of these landmarks are the remains of an ancient lava flow. Seven million years ago, a nearby volcano erupted and filled much of the Rogue Valley with a river of molten rock, hundreds of feet thick. These, <clears throat> these buttes were shaped by water. For thousands of centuries, the Rogue River and nearby streams slowly eroded the lava caps and softer underlying rock. This erosion has removed approximately one cubic mile of rock from the valley. Today almost all that is left are two horseshoe shaped remnants of the table rocks. For centuries a group of native people who called themselves the Tagalma, those dwelling along the river, lived in the shadows of t the table rocks. Tatank. There's a Titanak. I don't know if that's one or the other. I think it's Titanak or Titanak is the name of they called this rock. This place figured prominently in their mythology. The place there was at Table Rock where the Tagelma hired Kukua, the rainmaker, to ease a drought. He was so successful, endless rain flooded the valleys. Desperate that the Kelma asked Beaver to chew down Table Rock so that Chukua could be caught 
and the drowning deaths avenged. But Beaver gnawed down only a short distance onto the cliffs before he gave up and left. Later to escape the angry Tekelma, Kikuwa was transformed into a cedar tree atop Lower Table Rock. His son and grandson turned to stone and became the prominent pinnacles on the si south side of the cliff. The land surrounding the Tanakh provided sustenance. The Tegelma maintained oak groves for acorn production by regularly setting fire to the surrounding grassland. Deer and other game were attracted to these savannas and edible bulbs like camas flourished. The Tegelma hunted in the surrounding mountains and harvested runs of salmon and steelhead from the Rogue River. Some of the Tegelma gathered large amounts of oil-rich edible seeds from tarweed. They removed the seeds from flattened, with a flattened woven beading tool. The Tegelma used deer hides for men's tunics and women's skirts and fashioned bones and antlers into a variety of tools. The venison was boiled, roasted, or dried. Salmon were dried and stored for protein-rich winter food. The women harvested camas with special digging sticks and baked large quantities of the bulbs in underground earth ovens. Acorns were a staple of the Gelma diet. The nuts were ground into flour and then leached with water prior to cooking to remove the bitter taste. In 1855, the Degelma were forced from their homeland and resettled on a distant reservation in northwestern Oregon. As a spoken living language, the Degelman had mostly disappeared by 1900, but descendants of the Degelma people continue to visit Table Rocks today. In his 1845 journal, Mountain man James Kleiman made one of the first written references to the landmark, noting that he had sighted a table rock. In the early 1850s, the discovery of gold sparked the settlement of Table Rock City. About a year later, residents changed its name to Jacksonville. In 1853, a temporary reservation was created in the shadow of the Table Rocks after conflicts broke out between European American settlers and the Degelma people. The reservation closed in 1856 and its residents were forcefully relocated to the distant Grand Ron and Silets Reservation in what was known as Oregon's Trail of Tears. And there is a view of Sam's Valley, which is just to the north of Upper Table Rock. Here's a chunk of andesite which calved off of the cliff up above us and rolled down to this point here. Oh, it's nippy. There's frost on those rocks over there. Almost to the top. There's a big old outcropping of andesite. Well, I'm happy to report I have made it to the plateau. Two mesas are situated in the central part of Jackson County in southern Oregon, 10 miles north of Medford. They lie in a small valley surrounded by mountains. These mesas are known as the Upper and Lower Table Rock. The Upper Table Rock rises 2,068 feet above sea level. The Lower Table Rock has an elevation of 2,044 feet. 
At one time, the tops of these mesas were level with the valley floor. Between 50 and 40 million years ago, most of Oregon was covered by wide, shallow tropical seas. The area comprising Table Rock was a part of this great ocean floor that spread as far eastward as the Blue Mountains of eastern Oregon. Then came a period when the entire western part of the continent was subjected to profound earth movements. As a result of these movements, the seas were driven westward. Widespread volcanic activity occurred over most of Oregon. This brought about great changes, one of these being the building of, up of the Cascade Mountain Range. This phenomena produced a natural barrier against the Pacific Ocean, which was forced out of this region never to return. The departure of the seas took place gradually, leaving many swamps, ponds, brackish waters, and low areas. pre lava, initially believed to be all basalt flowing from an, the eruption of a nearby cone around 7 million years ago, filled the depressions in these low lands, which was the ancient Rogue River Valley. Subsequent erosion carved away softer materials, leaving two mesas capped with 100 feet or more of volcanic rock, which now are nearly 800 feet above the surrounding lowlands. One model suggests that basalt lava came from Castle Rock just to the west, but a more recent model using a more modern petrographic analysis favors an andesite flow coming from near Olson Mountain, which is an extinct shield volcano over by Lost Creek Lake. Sodic plagioclase Alkali, feldspar, pyroxene content, and ratio of alkalized silica qualify this rock as a tracheandesite, not basalt. The andesite of Table Rock is a distinctive plagioclase speckled dark gray to black glassy rock that typically crops out as poorly shaped pseudohexagonal columns. The cap rock forming the flat surface of the buttes is a 125 foot thick layer of grayish black dense andesite. Within the dense lava, numerous crystals of light colored plagioclase and equant darker augite occur. The mineral olivine is also present and is weathering to a dark red submetallic alteration product named itingsite. The capping lava exhibits prominent vertical cliffs. These cliffs have been formed by the differential erosion of the soft underlying sandstone and the resultant andesite. The lava rests unconformably on a sandstone pedestal formed from an Eocene age Payne's Cliff formation. The sedimentary rock unit which underlies much of the valley floor in this area. The easily eroding sandstone gradually undercuts the cap rock, causing large blocks of andesite to periodically fall downslope, thus renewing the fringe of vertical cliffs. Slump blocks form the predominant benches seen in places around the flanks of the table rocks. The table rocks represent a small erosional remnants of a very black, th a very thick and a extensive lava flow. Estimating the original extent of the flow is highly conjectural since there are only a few known outcrops. The source of the flow is thought to lie eastward in the volcanic Cascade Mountains. One 75 million year date has been radiometrically determined by the United States Geological Survey. Upper Table Rock and Lower Table Rock are capped by andesite. This capping lava is lithologically and chemically distinct from the other lavas in Cascade Range of Southern Oregon. In particular, the lava is more alkaline. The unit varies in thickness from a maximum of 730 feet at Lost Creek Lake to about 100 to 200 feet at the Buttes north of Medford. 
Isotopic ages indicate that the lava was erupted most likely about 7 million years ago. It spread over terrain of variable relief. The lava flow was not confined to the channel of the ancestral Rogue River, but spread like a sheet over much of the ancient valley of the Rogue River and its tributaries. The present shape of the two buttes is the result of erosion. Since the andesite of Table Rock was in place, faulting is known to have displaced the unit west of Lower Table Rock. Source vents for the andesite of Table Rock have not been discovered. They are most likely covered by younger lavas. Chemical data indicate a compositional link with younger alkaline lavas at Olson Mountain, a broad extinct shield volcano near Lost Creek Lake. The andesite of Table Rock is more similar to lavas at Olson Mountain than to lavas from stratovolcanoes of the High Cascades, formerly considered to be the source for the andesite of Table Rock. Tropical vegetation flourished here, including avocados, cinnamons, figs, and persimmons. On the volcanic hills above the plains, this vegetation was mixed with trees of temperate species, including the redwood, alder, tan oak, and elm. Peat accumulated from rotten vegetation in swamps. This was later converted into coal. Small horses, not more than a foot high, roamed the open spaces. Interesting fossils bearing out this information have been found in this vicinity. The huge volume of Table Rock's basalt or andesite must have crossed the western Cascades via the valley of the ancient Rogue River. This intracanyon flow inundated and displaced the river from its valley. Stream rounded gravel on the surfaces of the Table Rock provide evidence of the ancient displaced river. Gradually, the Rogue River re established its channel by cutting into and along the margins of the flow until today. No evidence remains of this event except for the Table Rocks. No volcanic older rocks have been located in the southern High Cascades, which are mostly less than 2 million years old. This makes the Table Rock Flow one of the oldest, if not the oldest, known volcanic unit of this geologic sub-province. Continuing volcanism built a tremendously thick pile of volcanic rocks northeast of Bear Creek Valley, and the streams cut deep channels as they flowed westward to the sea. During the next geological period, the climate gradually became cooler. Snow and ice accumulated on the high mountains of the Cascade Range in what is now the Crater Lake area. Crater Lake had not yet been formed. Glaciers choked the canyons to their brims, and one of them extended for at least 17 miles down the Rogue River Valley. The tropical vegetation began to disappear, and modern forests similar to those now present crept in to take their place. As a fan of the geologist Nick Zentner, I follow his lectures about the Ice Age floods which happened in eastern Washington and as far south as Eugene, Oregon. I suspect that similar although much smaller glacial lake outbursts occurred here in southern Oregon because parts of the Table Rocks remind me of a fossilized waterfall similar to Toulouse Falls. According to theories, over the last two million years, there have been at least 20 glacial periods when the ice came and gone on the average of every 10,000 years, causing mega floods that reshaped the landscape. Of course, not all geologists will agree with this. Although the dramatic eruption of Mount Mazama that formed Crater Lake had no direct effect upon the valley in which Table Rock lies, it is credited with the donation of a large quantity of pumice. This pumice is present as a strip approximately a mile long and a half mile wide. It extends on either side of the Table Rock Road from a distance beginning about a half mile from the Table Rock store 
almost to the foot of Lower Table Rock. The formation of this pumice resembles an old lake or a river bed. It has the characteristics of a ponded area, so the pumice was most likely carried there by a stream. It was probably the ancestral Rogue River whose channel was choked with deposits from the volcano. I hope that you enjoyed this presentation about the Table Rocks in Southern Oregon, their history and geology. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button. This will help with the YouTube algorithm and more people will get to see this video as my channel grows in popularity. Also hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss my next video. This is Phil with Applegate Bushcraft Survival and Prospecting. Thank you for watching.